All right, Lasso Selecting in Media Composer. This is another episode of Avid 19. So using the Lasso or the Marquee Bounding Box, which is, which is simply a matter of putting your cursor up in the background of your timeline. So in my case, the background is purple. That's a user setting thing. Uh, but you draw a marquee around what you want to select. Now, these tracks above are empty. And let's suppose we have a, a sequence with a lot of tracks. So I've added a bunch of tracks, Command Y, Command Y, Command Y. So if I want to select this cut point here, I simply drag that marquee or lasso around that cut point and it selects and it throws me into trim mode. I'm gonna hit escape, get out of trim mode. If I lasso around an entire clip and you have to go around the whole clip, uh, left to right to be specific, left to right is important. You wanna remember that I'm dragging left to right around this one clip here and it selects as a segment selection. If I lasso it around two clips, I would get two segments selected. Uh, if I had lassoed right to left around these clips, I'm gonna get a trim selection. I'm gonna get a uh, slip trim selection to be precise. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of trim mode. The other thing about lassoing is I could do this from the bottom background and select the track that way. In this case, I selected a cut, one cut per track is going to put you in a trim. Uh, in this case, I have three tracks, V1, A1, A2, and they get selected, and I get into a roll trim. In trim mode, I can click on the monitor, left, right, and get into a ripple trim. Again, I, I'm gonna hit escape. And uh, finally, the thing you should remember is, if you have a lot of tracks like this, if you hold down Option and Lasso, you can lasso within the track, so guess what? I'm lassoing three segments, boom, like that. Or I could lasso these three cuts. Again, if I have option, I can lasso within the tracks, boom, like that. I'm lassoing the front end of that clip and the back end of this clip. And that's basically in the it in a nutshell. You have to be aware of what object you're lassoing over. Again, I'm gonna hit escape. Whether or not it's a cut or a full clip in the timeline, and whether or not you're lassoing from left to right versus right to left. If you're just doing one cut, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hold down option, I can go right to left, escape, or left to right, but that's because I'm just going around the one cut versus the whole clip. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is sometimes you do get a single uh, flash frame between tracks, between clips rather, and if you have that flash frame and you're trying to lasso, you'll be selecting the flash frame and you'll be getting thrown into segment mode. You'll be like, what the hell is going on? Anyway, that's just it in a nutshell, and uh, I'll let the rest of the demo play now. I'm gonna turn on my clip frames here to make it a little easier to see what the heck I'm doing. Normally I don't have these turned on. So basically the rules of lassoing, you know, first of all, I am moving the playhead and I have my standard Avid cursor, which really does nothing but moves the playhead. I can command snap, or I can option command snap, command to the head of a clip, option command, you'll get to the tail of a clip like that. Um, but other than that, that's all that's happening right now. I don't have any of the smart tool icons, the segment mode icons, any of that stuff turned on. So my cursor is really doing nothing. And I tend to work that way because I know I can get into a segment selection or a trim selection by simply lassoing. So this is the way it works. You start with the background, click and drag and you get a bounding box. Now it's important what you drag that bounding box over. In a certain way, you can call this context sensitive because if you drag it over a cut, you'll get thrown into trim mode. So outgoing is the blue countdown versus the red incoming countdown. I'm gonna hit escape. Now I'm back into regular source record editing. I got this uh, crazy shot loaded up in the, uh, the source window over there and more countdowns and etc. etc. So I got into my trim selection. The next uh, selection I'm going to uh, deploy is a lasso around an entire clip. So the first one was just around a cut. Nothing but a cut per track, so help you God. If you go around an entire clip, you'll get a segment selection on that clip. So I am, uh, my default here is to go into red segment arrow and it might look blue uh, because of the way Camtasia is treating these icons for some reason, but it's really red. I promise you. And that's the selection I got. If I lassoed left to right, again, emphasizing that, I'm starting from the background. In this case, it's purple on my timeline. 
and I lasso around two clips, they both get selected. I can pick them up and drag them if I want to. And even if I lasso around three segments, because filler is treated as a segment in Media Composer, that will select that I can grab that filler segment along with the other segments I could overwrite to the, uh, the right if I wanted to. So those are uh, two types of selections, lassoing a cut, lassoing a segment, um, and it's important if you're lassoing around several cuts, let's say I'm gonna lasso around these three, that I lasso from left to right versus right to left. Now right to left, if you went around an entire segment such as this yellow countdown, Media Composer is gonna throw me into what's called a slip trim and I'm in trim mode and my outgoing shot is the red countdown. These are the, uh, this is the material I'm going to slip, the yellow countdown, the last frame of the shot and the first frame of the shot, 6-4, and then black is filler over here. If I had lassoed around the red countdown, right to left, you can see the selection has changed and I've got six, five, and six, five, blue, red, red, and yellow. And think of this stuff as selecting uh, rather than tools, in my opinion. Just a review, I have a, um, a mark selection going on in my timeline right now. That is an in-out mark for either lifting or overwriting uh, this five seconds, three frames of the timeline. If I... Uh, Select this, I am now in a segment selection for all intents and purposes, so I selected the red uh, countdown again. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to add to that selection, I can hold down shift with the red arrow now active, Arlo, red lift overwrite, and I can select that and shift select that and grab all three of those and move them. Command Z that. Uh, and trim for all intents and purposes it's, is its own kind of selection too. I'm selecting a cut between the outgoing blue countdown and the incoming uh, red countdown. Furthermore, um, you might say, well, I want to get into a ripple trim, uh, and none of the lassoing show so far has shown me how to do that. That is correct, um, but once you're in trim mode, you can hover over your uh, interface here. you got your outgoing uh, last frame of your blue shot and the first frame of your incoming red countdown, and uh, that's basically the cut line right now in the timeline, that's what you're seeing for all intents and purposes. And these purple boxes are the purple rollers. Now I can click on one and get into a ripple trim by selecting the one on the left. Maybe this should be yellow. Note to Avid interface designers, but it's still purple the way Avid traditionally had its rollers always. You can see it's yellow for ripple down here in the timeline. And that would be rippling out, adding frames or uh, extracting frames from this uh, purple countdown and pushing everything to the right or pulling it to the left. Uh, if I click over here on the red countdown or on this box, you can see I've toggled over. And if I move to the right, I'll be trimming off frames from the, uh, the red countdown. Or if I go to the left, I'll be rolling in frames, thusly. So now we're up to seven. If I click over here, I could go to the right. And now we're rolling out till we get to three. So you have the flexibility of switching your trim type once you get into trim mode. So essentially you can get to everything, segment selection, trim selection, a slip trim, and then you can get into a, a ripple trim, ripple trim left, ripple trim right, once you're in trim mode by simply clicking on the left monitor, clicking on the right monitor, or back to the center to get back to both boxes. So left, right, center, notice the icon, you have to hover over, you have to get into a little bit of real estate here on the left to get the, uh, the ripple roller icon there. It's basically, a a film can with film coming out the left side, maybe it should be yellow. Um, no to uh, interface designers out there for Media Composer. Back here, if I click in the middle, I get back into a, a roll trim or a dual roller trim or I click to the right and now we've got a selection on the right for a ripple trim on the right. Uh, if I were to lasso Dennis Hopper here, now when you're in trim mode, you can just lasso like that and you'll stay in trim mode. and whether you right or left lasso, it does not matter now. I'm gonna turn off my red segment arrow here, here so I can lasso within my tracks and do all this other lassoing stuff, which is kind of interesting because I'm in trim mode. Um, if I'm not in trim mode, I always have to lasso from the background over the cut. And again, you wanna make sure you lasso over a cut and nothing but a cut. If you have a little flash frame in here or something in your way that on an upper track, you might go around that whole clip and you'll be, be thrown into a, a segment arrow. In this case, I don't have that problem. But you might have uh, numerous other tracks. Command Y, Command Y, Command Y, Command Y, Command Y. And I just added those tracks. 
by obviously command Y and maybe I have let's say I have a lot of shots sprinkled around up here and I'm trying to lasso to get to this cut down here it could be a pain in the butt to try to you know lasso around or start way up here in the stratosphere you can lasso from the bottom as well from the again from the background but you might have a lot of audio tracks down there on the bottom so uh, here's where option lassoing is handy I can option lasso a cut again nothing but a cut so help me God I can option lasso around these three clips down here in the, in the tracks so option will allow me to lasso within the tracks uh, if you need to do that if I want to get uh, Dennis Hopper here and let's say roll him out I'm going to option lasso around his three tracks uh, selecting his video and the two audio tracks and this is just some uh, random apocalypse now shot and now that I'm in trim mode I'm gonna click on him because I want to roll him out and push down these uh, countdowns so I'm gonna click like that and now we have that selection uh, and I could roll him out with my arrows here boom 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 I've got this on the keyboard M through question mark your single arrows are basically the greater than and less than keys on the keyboard so I'm doing that right now I'm just holding the greater than arrow or the less than arrow and if you didn't know uh, JKL right above those keys will also trim when you're in trim mode and I can hear the audio and I can roll back J K stops the trim so JKL will trim you in trim mode dynamically so that's always been a feature in Avid Media Composer it's not some special thing you have to turn on um, another feature or oddness I would might say I'm gonna command left bracket of Media Composer is when I added these new tracks even though you have uh, sync clocks uh, and I got to I talk more about sync clocks in other demos and you can see the sync lock here is handy because it was pushing out Dennis Hopper uh, I, I selected Dennis Hopper and his audio, but the sync lock selected the filler here, and that ke keeps this uh, lower third in sync on top of this uh, interview shot over here. But if I uh, had added these tracks and I wasn't paying attention, you notice the new tracks do not have sync locks on by default. So I need to come down here and click TC sync lock, and they all turn on or all turn off. So be aware of that. When dealing with multiple tracks, you really want to have those sync locks turned on. I would say 90% of the time. So yes, I tend to use lassoing to get into segment mode, a trim mode, and um, I can pick and choose whether I want a ripple trim, left or right, once I do that, once I get into trim mode. Uh, the one thing that is not uh, easy to get through to through lassoing is the, uh, the red uh, roller, which I tend to use only for specific uh, purposes to roll out something maybe there's an audio hit but you need to uh, there's there's not a, a quick way of uh, clicking in, in uh, via lassoing to get into a uh, red roller trim uh, by the way if you are using the smart tool icons which used to be over here in the timeline are now basically condensed into these two buttons if you uh, right click you can see which tools are available there or which selection types is a better way of thinking about it and same thing over here with the segment arrows. Um, so yes, now that I have all that turned on, this is what my cursor is doing. This is a little more like, you know, what happens when you're in Premiere or other editing systems. I need to move the playhead up here. I have my uh, system set up so when I hit the time code bar down here or what's called the ruler up here, it automatically snaps me out of uh, whatever smart tools I had turned on. But let's say I did have them turned on. Now we're in a context sensitive situation and you need to be careful about what you're clicking when rather than lassoing uh, my cursor in this case if I'm clicking over the uh, the middle of a clip it's giving me a segment selection top is red bottom is yellow extract splice if I click near a uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here if I click near an edit point and I'm going to uh, make my tracks fatter by command L for large boom 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 or I could hold down option and get this little icon here and make the tracks fatter that way uh, at any rates when I'm moving my cursor around I'm in a context sensitive world now versus my lasso sensitive world I was in before and you can see I got the red arrow on the top the yellow arrow on the bottom if you hover there if you hover near a cut you get a red roller at the top a yellow ripple roller at the bottom left vice versa over here and see how I'm going to get kind of precise 
I got a ripple roller now on the right. And then if I go to the top, a red roller on the top, or if I hover over the middle, I get the dual roller selection like that. So you can work that way. Maybe you feel more comfortable doing that. You know, if you are in a uh, more complicated situation, such as a timeline like this, where you got a lot going on, it's 9-11, you got a lot of cuts. You can see why I normally don't have all the frames turned on in the timeline, clip frames are off. Uh, I did that with the fast menu, but if I'm waiting for my cursor to hover into, you know, toggle into some sort of context sensitive mode with all these cuts, I always find I really need to zoom into the timeline and I don't know, I tend to, I'd rather, if I had my druthers, I'd rather be lassoing like that. So I'm holding down option to select that cut right there. So let me hit escape to get out of trim mode and get back into source record mode. So again, uh, I'll go back to the simpler timeline just to review. The rules are select a cut like so, and you can option select that cut like so. Then you're in trim mode. Then you can click on the left monitor to get the ripple trim, click on the right monitor, get the ripple trim on the right or back to the center and hit escape, get out of trim mode. Now I'm back into source record mode with whatever's up in my source monitor right there. If you are lassoing around an entire clip, you want to go left to right. And because I have all these other tracks now, I'm going to hold down option. I'll get around this entire clip or maybe these two clips like that and grab them and move them with my red segment arrow. I'm gonna say 90% of the time you're gonna to wanna to grab things and move them with the red segment arrow. And the uh, segment selection you get is uh, based on the last one you used. So apparently I have both on right now. Uh, I'm gonna uh, turn off the yellow segment arrow and turn on the red segment arrow. So, and then let's say I don't have any segment arrow turned on and you'll see when I option lasso, I get the red one. And again, for some reason, Camtasia is making some of these icons look blue. So this arrow might look blue. Don't be confused. It's really red. So there's that. And then the third selection, which you're probably not going to use quite as often, is to lasso right to left rather than left to right around a segment, two cuts, and you will get a slip trim. So if you're just slipping material, that's what that's for, and I think I cover that in another demo. Uh, by the way, just to add one more thing to the mix, uh, in the timeline settings, I'm gonna do command equals to quickly get to the timeline settings. Uh, you can turn on dynamic lassoing, uh, which was not turned on before, so I'm gonna turn it on and hit okay. And now instead of having to lasso from here to here, you can see what's happening, or maybe you can't. Instead of lassoing around all three clips, I'm getting uh, the three clips selected by just lassoing within the clips and the filler track as well. Um, I'm going to turn that off and then if I just lasso within the clip holding option, I get that selection and that selection or select like that. So you can, that's dynamic lassoing. You can lasso within the clips and get that selection. It's a little bit more like Premiere if you are uh, looking for that kind of uh, experience in the timeline. Uh, a bit of a caveat though is you can't really lasso around the, the cut and get a trim selection. Um, so that's a bit of a downer on that idea. But anyways, dynamic lassoing is in there if you prefer uh, that kind of stuff. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for lassoing in the Avid Media Composer timeline. Uh, as always, we'll fix this in post. Oh, wait. We're in post.